Yes. And oh, then you can, has can share it with me afterward. Okay, that sounds great. All right, very good. Um, wonderful. Let me go back to my notes just to quickly see what I prepared. Wonderful. So I typically start with the role of the person that I'm talking to. So I'd love to better understand what, I, I know what your role is. Uh, I know where you work and what you do, but it would also help me understand what your goals are and what is it that you're trying to achieve uh, to see if, we, if there's anything we can do for you basically and better support you. Can you hear me? I think I've lost you. So, uh, very interestingly, soon you, as you started recording, I lost your voice. Uh, oh, can you can you hear me now? Yeah, I I, I can hear you now. Uh, it seems. Now, now I can't hear you. <laughs> no, not anymore. <laughs> right, it seems that okay. it, it just mutes me randomly. So um, I'll just have to keep pressing space uh, from time to time. But, but I think it's okay. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Good. So, so let's get started. Sorry. So please. Yes. Um, so my first question is what what your role is, basically. I'd love to learn more about what you do and how you do it and perhaps what your goals are. What is it that you're trying to achieve in general? Uh, can you press space now? Yes, so yeah. <laughs> I'm the digital minister uh, of the Taiwan's cabinet uh, and my main role uh, is uh, three things. Uh, I work on open government, which means that people can start a petition and in the petition, they can summon me anywhere uh, with 5,000 signatures. And when we do that, we always use Slido to make sure that people joining in the upstream, uh, which we always have a Slido QR code um, that they can dial in uh, to have a conversation or people in the same room, but because of uh, asymmetry of power would prefer to speak pseudonymously. Uh, these are the mm -hmm. two uh, main uh, Kind of constituents uh, using Slido in our open government work. So that's my first uh, portfolio. Mm -hmm. My second portfolio is called social innovation. And in this role, I tour around Taiwan. For example, uh, today I just returned from the Xinzhu County uh, and I lived there uh, for an entire day or even for a day before or two days before um, to learn about the local issues. And then I connect uh, with um, five municipalities and 12 um, uh, central government section chiefs or higher using Zoom. And so in the Zoom, it's like a fishbowl. I'm in the one uh, meeting room where the people are already used to meet in their local town hall and uh, different municipalities just join um, through Zoom so they can solve the issue together and brainstorm and I absorb the risk because if people there are upset, you know, you can't hit mm -hmm. people over Zoom. I'm the only one in the vicinity uh, and share the credit because they can see the central government people solving their problems uh, in real time. And for uh, it's not like it's, it's not broadcasted, meaning that whenever uh, people have uh, a um, input, it must be from somebody in the same room. But on the other hand, because these are people with less um, digital savviness, uh, sometimes they need uh, people's uh, assistance. For example, someone uh, will turn their handwriting or into input from Zoom. And it's uh, used that way. Uh, and the other way is because um, there's five different municipalities. Uh, and there really is no way for people to raise their hand and for me to notice. And so they usually use Slido as a way to kind of flag uh, their concerns. And we always say that people's uh, responses through Slido, especially URLs, which is very difficult to say uh, and, and be heard correctly <laughs> across five different places, um, they basically replace the Zoom chat room. Um, and so we... I The recent question part uh, of Zoom, uh, of Slido, to uh, make sure that the newest uh, ideas are always uh, read in real time. And so that is as opposed to the open government uh, role where we sometimes just don't show the latest questions. So that's the 
second one. It's not live streamed, uh, and it's basically used as a alternative to the Zoom chat room. I understand. Interesting. Okay. And finally, on the third role, which is youth innovation, uh, we also use Slido for internal meetings. So just that there's no um, external constituents, but because there is, is still power imbalance in the room uh, between the minister and their young reverse mentors, we still use uh, Slido. Uh, and we sometimes also use it for voting. And uh, the voting part, I understand, is not today's uh, idea. And so I would just say that I also have some future requests on voting that I would table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course. Uh, surely we'll get to that. I'm, I'm sure of that. Mm -hmm. um, very good. Thank you so much for walking me through um, the, the different types of sessions where Slido is utilized. I, in regards to, to those public sessions where people attend, it's a public meeting, I assume. Um, who are these people exactly? Are these mm -hmm. the constituents, I believe? Mm -hmm. So because we're at a national level, uh, we answer to mm -hmm. the collaborative meetings that are, uh, the agenda is set by anybody uh, with, um, that can collect more than 5,000 signatures. Uh, and so mm -hmm. there's a like uh, the We the People uh, platform, the, those e-petition platforms. And I um, include here mm -hmm. the uh, website that describes mm -hmm. who are enough about one particular social or environmental issue that uh, they petitioned online and on the preset time dial in to the live stream or come to the face-to-face -face meeting. Right, thank you. I've just opened the link just to make sure it's saved. Um, understand, I noticed that the format of a session is typically the same uh, for these meetings that you actually have the iPad in front of you uh, and you switch between Slido and other materials that you've prepared for the session. Um, is this always how it works or do you, do you alternate with some other style? So in venues with two projectors, sometimes we project one with Slido and one with mm -hmm. uh, the, the live um, slides, mm -hmm. uh, but that mm -hmm. is rare. Uh, I would say in 90% of cases, it's switching. Right. And do you always drive the conversation by using Slido? Is it always like that, that you simply start off with questions from uh, whoever is in the audience? And then as you go through the questions, you also kind of pull in different content. And ex I, I, I'm assuming you're explaining or providing answers also through the content that you've prepared as you're responding to different questions. That was my assumption. Maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Right. So, so you're talking about actually not uh, the public meetings, but my lectures, oh, okay, uh, which, okay, is, okay. which is in my really non-ministerial facility, because uh, I, I'm bringing only myself uh, to the table and I'm okay. only answering like this, ask me anything uh, forums. Mm -hmm. So if you see, uh, I show a slide at the very beginning without any informative mm -hmm. material, uh, that's mm -hmm. one of those ask me anything um, lectures. Uh, okay. And, yeah, so, uh, and for that, uh, you are correct that I usually just explain how Slido works, maybe begin with a five minute introduction, but then it's all Slido driven. Right. Then I have to admit, I think I saw the lecture this, this okay. afternoon. It wasn't okay. one of the public meetings. Okay. So okay. can you, cool. So can you perhaps also explain how, how exactly or what your setup is for those public meetings? That would okay. be helpful. Right. So for the public meetings, uh, I think it will be uh, really good if we can look at a actual live stream meeting. So we mm -hmm. uh, uh, have some understanding of what's going on uh, mm -hmm. for the for the public meetings. Um, uh, I'm going to share uh, one of the more recent ones. Uh, just okay. a second. Um, mm -hmm. Right. This one. So uh, it's the most recent one. There's many. Uh, you will see the title says the 58th one. Um, yes. And from the very beginning, you can see that part of the live stream is Slido. I can see that on the left hand side, right. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So it's, yeah, so it's live stream. So there are people physically in the audience, but also people joining online and they can see this what I'm looking at right now, basically. So they can see slide questions on the left hand side. Yes, so what I was describing is that people in the room 
sees only one projector and they necessarily uh, flip over uh, the presentation and Slido. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, as you can see on the bottom left side, but if you see the live stream, then you always have the view of both Slido and the presentation mm -hmm. because of yes. how uh, open broadcast is being set up. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you now, if you compare your public lectures and these public meetings, where do you feel Slido is um, working better, or maybe it's working well in both scenarios? I'm just wondering what your kind of impression is and how it's utilized. Um, so, I'm beginning to think if I can dial in to Zoom using my other laptop, uh, okay. we will have less uh, voice problems. But please don't okay. disconnect. Uh, I will see if yeah. I can have a uh, voice coming in from one, but uh, the screen coming in from the other. Okay, just, just okay. A uh, this should work. Thank you, thank you for your flexibility, I appreciate it. No problem, it. no problem. Uh, and so, okay. okay. I believe this is working. Yes. Okay. Very good. So, so let me just continue then. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. So um, the, the point here is uh, twofold. Uh, one is that my public lecture literally only existed because of Slido. Um, I, I had mm -hmm. no other public lecture uh, styles before. And so, so that was entirely structured around Slido. So it's kind of mm -hmm. meaningless to ask whether it works uh, well or not, because for each yeah, of yeah. your new feature, um, I changed my public lecture style. It used to be that I handcraft those artisanal QR codes, uh, but now you've made it uh, into a core feature. Uh, and so I don't have to do that anymore uh, and so on. And, and so I, I would say that my public lecture co-evolved with Slido. Uh, it's a little mm -hmm. bit meaningless to, to ask whether it makes it good or not, because without Slido, mm -hmm. I wouldn't accept those public lectures. Uh, and so that's sense. the thing. Uh, and for the open meetings, I think Slido, work okay, um, it's certainly better than the YouTube uh, chat rooms for obvious mm -hmm. reasons, because you can <laughs> highlight and you can uh, upvote and there's uh, no like paid advertisements or something like that, that you can pay a few dollars to have your uh, comments put on top. We really don't need that feature uh, and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. And so, so it's a much more pure uh, um, relationship. And it also gives people in the same room something to do because otherwise they just flip their phones. Uh, but now we use their phones as part of the open meeting. And mm -hmm. because open meetings are really long, they are five hours. Uh, and so uh, people yeah. get distracted quite easily. Uh, and Slido certainly um, moves away one of the main source of distraction. And I thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no, thank you for using it so well. That's, that's really nice to hear. Um, now that you've mentioned questions a couple of times, I do have a few there uh, that I'd like to ask you about. Um, yes. So regardless of, maybe we can focus on those public meetings because those take four hours. So the number of questions might be higher and also the nature of the questions might be different. Yes. Um, when you receive those questions, how do you prioritize which questions you take first, second and third? I know we have the popularity order. So I guess that's the default state. Um, what I'm maybe suggesting is that it's not the ideal way of prioritization, and I'm wondering if you have any other way of picking questions that you want to answer first, if that makes sense. Yes, so uh, we tried quite a few ways. Uh, we tried doing timestamp order, which is disaster. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's a real chat room, of course, but then people get distracted too easily, uh, meaning yes. that um, it's, it's almost impossible to stop the influx of uh, comments. Mm -hmm. So, so that's okay. Uh, we tried um, the idea of uh, holding everything in moderation, uh, but okay. then uh, the moderator um, is very busy then, uh, and, and mm -hmm. people uh, will actually stop using their phones for Slido uh, if they have to wait for too long for it to be mm -hmm. approved uh, for obvious reasons. Yeah, and so, right, so, um, so we are settling on the upvote for now, uh, but we also use uh, the built-in features such as uh, highlighting, starring, and so mm -hmm. on as a kind of internal order. Uh, but I would certainly say that it's not ideal and people figure mm -hmm. out very quickly they can use private browsing uh, to push whatever mm -hmm. to the top. 
um, just mm -hmm. by opening a lot of side windows. Uh, I don't know whether that's still the case, but we consistently do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, can you repeat the last uh, last three words yes. that you said? I, I don't, it broke up, yeah, we sorry. We consistently get people who game the system using private browsing. Uh, and okay. to get arbitrary number of likes, uh, um, mm -hmm. maybe something only they uh, care about as an individual. Mm -hmm. I understand. Very strongly. I, yeah. yeah. What made you consider not using the uh, or, or not using the the default ordering by popularity? As I said, three reasons. Ron. The first one is that uh, sometimes it's being gamed. So, oh, okay, okay. Sorry, right. I didn't connect it. That's sorry. Right, right. So, so like um, using using private browsing, uh, you can game okay. it. So that's the first reason. I think that's the main reason. And the second okay. is that sometimes the volume is so much that people cannot easily uh, using like in a constructive fashion, uh, and so mm -hmm. it become uh, less predictable than timestamp order, but don't have mm -hmm. the same moderation power anyway. So that's the second reason. Right. Sometimes. Uh, and the third reason um, is that uh, sometimes because of the volume, we thought pre-moderation would be a good idea, but it turns out it's not. Um, and yeah. so, um, and for English uh, lectures that I give, I found that the question only is a really good compromise. I don't have to moderate that much. And the people who are simply dropping in to share a image your URL um, is uh, discouraged mm -hmm. to do so, uh, which is excellent. Uh, but uh, at the moment, it's not for uh, Chinese traditional, not for Mandarin. Um, and so our, all our open meetings are in Mandarin. So we haven't used mm -hmm. uh, that for that. Okay. Okay. I understand. Um, this is quite interesting. Um, so to better understand what, the, like, what, you, what happens there, have you ever been in a situation that you looked at the screen or on your iPad and you thought like, these four questions are great, but I wish we had better questions? Um, meaning that you were hoping that the, the questions could be, could have much higher quality, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying, but in, in open collaboration meetings, um, what, what concerns me is not the, the quality of the top questions, but rather the volume. Uh, inevitably, when the volume is moderate, like people are watching live stream, 5,000 people are watching, but they understand that this is for agenda setting. And so they only input unique points that are not already raised by other people. Uh, mm -hmm. If they do that, then there really is no low quality, even though uh, people ask questions that are very basic, we're happy to answer them. Uh, the mm -hmm. problem is flood control, is people making mm -hmm. the same points just in different ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand. And how, and mm, interesting, how are you, how are you solving this problem right now, apart from popularity? Because you can allow upvotes, so you get the best ones on top. So I guess that's the way of approaching the problem that this is the way yeah, you avoid so, so, the, yes, the duplicity. So, so, yes. So currently it's a combination of disabling the recent question, uh, mm -hmm. allowing for 240 instead of 180 uh, comments. Okay. So we reward longer comments this way. Uh, and uh, sometimes mm -hmm. just do manual highlighting or even manual upvoting uh, to get the quality ones on top. So that's what we're coping with, but it's, it's not ideal. Okay, so if you want to highlight a good question that is not in the top four, you have to kind of scroll down and find a question that makes sense? Is that, is no, that what you would do? No, currently what we will do uh, is to use another device uh, and okay. uh, just either arbitrarily upvote it, which is what I sometimes do, or if I just don't have the, the um, time to do that, then we just uh, arbitrarily press highlight in the admin interface okay. from another device, saying that we want uh, to surface this one. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. And okay. Interesting. And very interesting. And w w what is typical the reason for you to find that, like to look for that question? Um, I'm, I'm trying to understand that if someone's presenting and, and, and you want to take questions, that pre presenter is probably not going to know. I'm trying to understand, like, how do you get yeah, to that yeah, question that the, you then highlight? I think, how I does think it... the, the, the idea here is, is uh, not what you're... Um, so there's no single speaker in an open collaboration meeting. People can raise their okay. hand 
and become speakers essentially. So think oh, of a okay. more deliberative meeting. And what we're saying okay. is that people in the live stream, obviously they cannot raise their hand. Yes. But they can raise their point. And we want okay. the points to be taken as post-it notes. Um, if you see the YouTube live stream, you will see mm -hmm. a lot of post-it notes uh, around the uh, later half. Uh, like if you scroll to, I don't know, two hours or later, you will see a lot of post-it notes being uh, posted uh, on three groups. Oh, oh yes, I can see right. that. And so we want, what we want to do is that we want to raise the unique points that's not raised by the people in the room as post-it notes to those physical mm -hmm. boards so that people can collectively think about those key questions. And so this is not a question to a speaker in the usual sense but rather an okay. issue to be talked about in a group dynamic. Oh, I understand that. Yes, I also noticed that you uh, kind of included a link to one of the collaboration applications, Miro.com. Um, that's right, that's right, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. But people so, cannot so we, write on Miro, uh, obviously. It's not designed yes, for yeah. crowd input. So we take crowd input yes. from Slido and uh, hand carry the pertinent questions by reading them aloud and uh, moving yes. them to Myro. Oh, right, interesting. Oh, wow, this is fascinating. Yeah, and, and so in a sense, I, it, it, it's a bit of between question and ideation. Yeah. And so, but yes. it's not really ideas because they are in its format questions, but we want to treat mm -hmm. them as kind of um, opening questions with no fixed answer for people to brainstorm. And in that sense, it's yeah. a little bit an ideas. Yes. Do you feel like the questions feature is serving this purpose well? No, as I said, but, but it's better than the ideas or pose feature. And, and so that's yeah. what we're working with, obviously. Yeah. yeah, I understand. I understand. Have you used one of our features, which is called labels? I'm just curious if you've heard of that one. I, I've, seen, uh, I've seen labels okay. uh, and okay. I really haven't uh, tried it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fair enough. I, that was just one of my ideas that I had. Uh, in I, I, to... saw, I saw it only because I was translating it, uh, but okay. I, I haven't had the occasion uh, to use it for sorting. It would be nice mm -hmm. if just by labeling it, it automatically, um, you know, you can switch between labels uh, in a question view or it's uh, labeled questions become Miro cards automatically using an API. Those are obviously things that would help, but I haven't really used yeah. labels. So I yeah. can't answer uh, useful. Yeah, no, it's all right. So the API thing is not available, but you can definitely label questions and then display only those labeled questions, let's say for the participants, whoever is in the collaboration. So that you can achieve with labels. Um, yeah. Okay, but, but it's, a, um, it's language agnostic, right? I mean, I can use it now. Yes. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. um, Wonderful. Uh, let me go back to my notes real quick. Thank you for explaining the, the session. Thank you for your patience. I wasn't, um, I didn't always understand. So thank you for explaining. Um, no no problem. Questions. No problem. And labels uh, look interesting. Uh, can I multi-label a question? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? Can I assign a question multiple la labels? Yes, you can do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, excellent. So, so maybe I'll try it next time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, so I'm wondering which kind of which session we should talk about now in regards to this question I have, but maybe you can choose. Um, what happens to the questions after the meeting? Um, my assumption is again that maybe during the four hour, five hour meeting, you're able to answer the questions and also categorize them properly and do everything that you're supposed to do with the questions. But I can imagine that in some sessions, there's not enough time for all the questions. But again, I might be wrong. So what happens to the questions that you either don't manage to answer or even to those questions that you manage to answer? Is there any post-processing to the questions? I'm yes. just curious about the post-event yes. part. Yes, so at the moment, uh, we do two things. First, if we are using Miro in those Miro moderated meetings, we manually go over the Slido questions and uniquify them uh, and uh, move them into an area, um, assorted Slido questions uh, on Miro, okay. uh, whether they're answered or not. And, and it's just for, for 
bookkeeping, but also important because people will know later when they get this beautifully printed uh, PDF or, or they don't, they just look it online, they will see that their slider questions are there after all. And so it's mostly just for accountability. Uh, or okay. I do an Excel export uh, and uh, I just write a small pro program that uh, translates those spreadsheets uh, into Markdown so that it can be appended to the end of the transcript. Uh, okay. And then the end of transcript, uh, because we allow for 10 working days for everybody to edit over it, uh, something that can be answered asynchronously um, can then uh, be taken care of just by editing and uh, moving uh, to that uh, part of the um, transcript. And I understand this is very abstract, so I'm going to paste you an example <laughs> because even Thank I you. myself wouldn't understand what I'm saying without <laughs> a, a example. Uh, right, and so, so here is, is how it uh, looks like, um, right here. Mm -hmm. um, can, you, can you see the uh, Zoom um, questions? I can, I can see uh, the latest link that I can see is, oh, no, it's arrived. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, got it. Mm -hmm. Right. So as you can see, this is a huge transcript with huge amount of meeting. Uh, and if you scroll up a little bit, uh, you will see that I declare the end of the meeting, uh, which is here. Uh, but then after that, you will see a few speakers with the name Slido comment. Yes. Right? So whatever has mm -hmm. transpired before uh, is an open meeting uh, in social innovation uh, portfolio. Uh, and what's after this line is the Slido question initially unanswered, but then uh, various ministries may, after the fact, fact, take 10 working days to get a written answer and we publish it together with the transcript. So that's the other way of handling this. This is fascinating. So when I click on link in context, that takes me to the original question or the comment that was made. Right. Is that right? right, right, right. Yes, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and then uh, uh, it's right. So uh, it's also tracked uh, from the transcript because we're first we're working on the technology to generate Miro ish uh, mind map uh, from the from the uh, transcript itself. Uh, but uh, Something else uh, is this one. Um, if you open it, I think it's bilingual uh, in its interface. You can switch on the uh, right top corner. It's not going to help you a lot uh, because the <laughs> questions themselves are in uh, Chinese, but I, I guess you can Google Translate it. Uh, but then yep. all the slide of questions that are answered will be moved into the solved category here as well. And so people who have asked those questions can track it afterwards. Yes, and you built this your build this yourself. Is that is that right? Oh, with a contractor, but yes. Okay. Oh, this. <laughs> this right, is so this good. Is, this is Slido really using uh, it in a cross ministerial governance context. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think you build better reporting features than we offer. To be honest with you, <laughs> this is much better than we have currently. Um, okay, I'm happy to collaborate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm afraid we will have to do that. <laughs> this is very good. Th thank you for sharing this with me. This is really interesting. Um, interesting. So th there are two, just to summarize, there are two primary kind of reasons why we do this. It's accountability, but it's also making sure that people who attended the meeting or even those who didn't attend the meeting can actually read through the questions and comments. Um, to understand what decisions were made perhaps, or if, yeah, in, in like this is in a nutshell. Um, is this helping you make decisions too? Yes, uh, on, a, on a certain level, yeah? Certainly, yeah, because um, I can always use full text search to find out whether some question is frequently asked. And not mm -hmm. only myself, but people can proactively find it because say it and the SI platform are very discoverable certainly more so in an SEO sense than individual slide of questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so people can just use search engine and find their questions previously asked and uh, mm -hmm. ask a deeper question next time instead of studying uh, from, from scratch, right? So that's the main gain. Uh, the other gain is that because we make sure that all the relevant ministries 
uh, go through the transcript because they don't want to publish anything untoward, right? So they have to check it anyway. And so it makes sure that anything is read twice, both by the people sent by the ministry to the open meeting, but also by the people working at desk or even higher level officials when they go through the mm -hmm. transcript, which include a slide of question that they may want to answer publicly. And so it's not only uh, accountability, but it's also um, getting the ministries in the uh, same page, uh, so to speak, about what each ministry think of the same uh, question so that they mm -hmm. don't fight with themselves or uh, even if they do yeah. in a more efficient way. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, excellent. It's a lot to process because this is so good. Um, mm. <laughs> but that, that's, that, that's a good thing. So thank you for sharing these insights with mm -hmm. me. Um, cool. So we have 10 minutes left, but I'm, I'm happy to stay on the call even longer. I would love mm -hmm. to hear, you did mention you have a feature request very briefly. I'm sure there's mm -hmm. more of it. So mm -hmm. if you can please share with me, I, I'm, I'm really oh, yeah, listening yeah, yeah. very intently to what you have to say. <laughs> no, it, it, it's, it's a simple uh, feature request. It's just to make sure that a poll feature uh, has a minimum vote uh, and that's it. May, can you maybe elaborate? Please. Right. So, um, for example, if we have uh, uh, five candidates uh, to select from, sometimes we want to say that each person who votes must vote uh, three or more votes. Okay. Uh, and currently in the poll feature, you can set the maximum, uh, but okay. not the minimum. The minimum is by default uh, one, right? Okay. And, and, and so uh, there really is no way to dial it up. And so we resorted to pre cre pretty creative ways. For example, when we ha have to ask people to vote for two votes out of three options, uh, we will set up four options, single choice. That's A plus B, A plus C, B plus C, and A plus B plus C. Uh, and and that's, okay. that's actually kind of confusing. Um, so so that would be, it would be nice to add it back, yeah. Um, do you think you could show me in your account, would that be, yeah, sure, Would sure. That be of okay. Course. Of course, mm -hmm. not, not a problem. So um, let me just open one recent example where I did that and do a share screen, if that's okay with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, thank you. Right. So, um, so we have a lot of uh, monthly meetings. I think the latest one is this one. It's the same anyway. Uh, and uh, let me share my Slido management screen. I think it's mm -hmm. this one. Can you see it? Uh, no, not yet. Oh. Oh, it's gonna come through it. Oh no, Fine. it's coming. Okay. okay, it's on now. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. So we have three options and we call them three, four, and five uh, for, for weird reasons. Just, just um, bear with me. Uh, and then we want, actually it's a, uh, a kind of a, a rule for each participating ministry to vote for at least two out of three. But because okay. there is no uh, minimum vote uh, feature, at least not uh, far as I can see, uh, for example, here is multiple choice, right? And here is yes. allow attendee, and this is limit max. But yes. we don't have a limit minimum. Yeah, I understand now. Mm -hmm. Right, and so we'll have to work around it by saying, you vote one out of four, but these are a combination and uh, um, voting rate, uh, we have to manually add uh, like this, this, and this together to get um, the voting rate for the option three. Yes, I understand what you mean now. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. this makes sense. You simply don't want people to not select one if they are supposed to select two, in other words. Exactly, uh, and yes, right, so it paves the way for uh, more uh, advanced voting methods, uh, but but that's the gist of it, yes. Right. Um, so, um, I apologize if you've mentioned this already, but what, what's the, what, what do you guys vote on typically? What, what's the topic? It votes what, on the decision? which topic from the petition is uh, due for a collaboration meeting. Because collaboration meeting, open meetings take time to prepare. Mm -hmm. Every month mm -hmm. we can only select two. Okay. Out of potentially three or four or five or six candidates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if it's uh, selecting two, we really want people to vote the two that they want to be scheduled yeah. in instead of just one, uh, because that creates a kind of perverse voting pattern. Uh, but we, we found that voting two is the right thing to do. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. So, okay. That makes sense. Very interesting. Okay. It's a niche use case. I'm not saying this is universally useful. Yeah. Um, I personally haven't heard this before, uh, but that mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's not common. Like not everyone raises feature requests uh, to mm -hmm. us. So mm -hmm. I, I think this, but I, what you're explaining and how you think about it, it makes sense. And I agree mm -hmm. that that could be one of the features. I think that could be quite helpful. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you can think of that would kind of make your life easier? In mm -hmm. Maybe just having the question only feature somehow portable to to mandarin that would be super helpful okay. uh, i'm happy to help with the algorithm actually <laughs> okay okay like like Is if that... i actually have the api i can code it myself yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> i bet you can <laughs> yeah. is that do you mean the translation of the questions from english to mandarin is that what you mean no um the, the translation would be useful but not super useful uh what okay. i'm referring to is the Slido Labs uh, comments okay. filtering. This one. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. I know what you mean. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the Mandarin, the question written in Mandarin, I actually also filtered and stopped um, before they, if, if they're comments only. I, well, I think well, it I know says what you mean. English only, right? So yeah. uh, assembly yeah. don't yeah. Turn, turn it, uh, the option on for Mandarin meanings. Yeah. Yes. I don't think it would work anyway, um, to be honest with you. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but it's, it's okay. been pretty useful in English only settings. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you, when you say useful, what can you perhaps explain what, what happened? I understand that, that it's supposed to stop questions which are not questions, rather comments. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and that's precisely what it did. So uh, okay. when I'm like moderating a panel discussion or uh, things like that, uh, and especially when it's live streamed, there are a lot okay. of people who take advantage of Slido being anonymous and they being behind the screen watching live yeah. stream. So there really is no accountability, so to speak of. And then sometimes mm -hmm. there are just, just one single person that we don't know uh, from where that really like to paste a lot of emoji and things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. But they usually go away when they see that they're blocked by the um, non-question filtering. Uh, and, but most of the people they post questions and we don't want to manually moderate uh, each one because as I said it reduced the incentive yep. so so I think that's the the best uh, thing uh, for such settings mm -hmm. uh, and if it's available in Mandarin that's very useful yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand wonderful um, anything else that's that's all from me yeah. okay okay um, Thank you for your time. I kind of ran out of questions. I think this is all I wanted to cover. Better understand your setup, also the use case and how you utilize Slido. So this has been very helpful. So thank mm -hmm. you very much for your time. Um, mm -hmm. I think mm, I think I have one more question because we have three minutes, if that's okay. Yes, um, of course. Yeah. So I know you mentioned that you have no other feature requests, but I'm more interested in your role as a solo presenter. So uh -huh. one person on stage at the lecture giving the lecture and presenting content with the questions yeah is that yeah, i, I know you use, yeah. yeah oh it's perfect okay because i wanted to ask you about that if there's anything we can do from the perspective of a solo presenter that would make your life right. easier and the management so, and everything around that as a solo presenter if i'm away from my ipad then uh the switcher of course very useful but because i'm yeah. almost exclusively using my ipad using apple pencil uh, a lot of your desktop oriented feature, a lab or not, uh, is simply not uh, very pertinent to my use case because I'm mm -hmm. always controlling directly on the present mode. Yes. So any, any control I can have on present mode is sufficient. And I only have two views, which is present mode uh, Slido. And if I swipe uh, the good notes, which is my presentation. And another yes, swipe, I'm yes. back to Slido. So uh, I really don't need a switcher, uh, so to speak. And I don't usually use my phone, um, except maybe as a alternate view uh, to Slido. But that's it. And I don't really yes. don't use the uh, phone for control. And so because of mm -hmm. that, um, I think um, I can't really access the moderation interface easily without distracting the audience, because I have to check my phone then. Um, and um, as a solo presenter, I think having the comment filter filtering out non-questions uh, is perfect. And I really don't have anything to ask when it's English only. 
when it's Mandarin, of course, I have to manually kind of play. Um, I don't know what's what's the English name uh, of that uh, pitting some hedgehog or whatever uh, groundhog uh, thing uh, yeah. based on the based on the kind of recent questions. Uh, but mm -hmm. that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I understand. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, wonderful. Audrey, thank you so much for your time. Um, so I'm, if that's okay, I'm going to stop the recording now. I, okay. I took all the links from the, so I'm going to stop it now.